Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. We're back in Premier League action this weekend after our break for international football and I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by a man who last played for Everton in December of last year and a man who last played for Everton 20 years ago. <laughs> Graham Stewart <laughs> and Yannick Bolassi. Right, Yannick, great to see you here on the Everton show. The first and most obvious question, yeah. how are you? How's the rehab going? Well, the rehab's going great at this minute. Um, like I've always said, I couldn't ask to be in a better place and I'm taking it as the weeks go but yeah hopefully back soon. Has it been a long hard road? Yeah it's been a it's been a difficult road I think the hardest part obviously is um, trying to stay in good shape which I did go all, all over the place at one point but now I'm in very <laughs> good nick so I'm happy. You can't blame everybody for going all over the place in <laughs> this time. Oh, absolutely. Every player <laughs> suffers of course injuries. you do. I mean, I was going to say to you, Yannick, as well, yeah. did you get an opportunity as well? Because I've, I've been down the road where mm -hmm. you've had a cruise ship, yeah. which was six months. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult, isn't it, yeah. mentally as well, to just see four walls all the time. Yeah. Did you manage to get away and have a bit of a break from it yeah, as well? Yeah, you know, I was lucky enough to be allowed to get away by the medical team. So the year, to be honest, to myself, don't feel like a year because it was broken up a lot. and. Mm -hmm. You know, now that I'm coming to the end, it's almost coming like too quick, if you know what I'm trying to say. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Brilliant. So are we, mate. So are we. <laughs> have you been a good patient or have you been an, an impatient patient? Well, if you ask the, the, the medical staff, they probably say I've been very moany. But, <laughs> you know, I, I guess that's just down to, you know, the expectation and obviously the demand that I put in myself in trying to get back and... You know, it's all good for a good cause, but I know when to be patient as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Great to have Yannick Balassi and Graeme Stewart with us this week, and plenty more to come from both of them. But first of all, let's now hear from Umar Nias. He really has been one of the success stories of the season, and we sat down with Umar earlier this week at USM Finch Farm. And he brings a lot of things new, so it's make people to work hard because that's the only things now we need to push the other teams harder and then what we were doing so outside we were working hard very hard yeah you've become something of a, of a cult hero i think at everton now there's a, there's a lot of love i think for you from the fans they appreciate you you spoke about how much uh, passion and, and energy that you give to this club do you do you understand the feeling from the fans do you appreciate that they love the clubs they love the club they love everton so i think it's now maybe that's they give it to me, they give me that love because they, they see me the way I'm working hard in the pitch then, and they love that kind of things. People who, even if I'm not the best player about quality, but in the pitch when I get in, I'm just going to give 100%. When you get 16 or 15 getting in the team, they learn you how to control the ball, where to learn. I didn't have that chance. I just learned to play at the street. So I know just my fighting spirit can help me. So that's why. Like I said, if the ball go behind the defender, most of the players saying, yeah, this ball gonna go out. But me, I'm just running because I, I'm used to run and one bounce can help me to bring it back because I used to play in the sun. So my mentality is like that, I'm gonna always run. Sometimes it's helping me. The defender think or the goalkeeper think I'm not gonna come, but I'm, I'm not gonna give up, I will come. It has been a, a difficult season at times so far, Yannick, but mm -hmm. as I said earlier, one of the plus points has been Umar Nias, and everybody must be delighted at how his fortunes have turned around. Yeah, for him to turn around that kind of fortune, you know, that's credit to himself mm -hmm. because, you know, when you get left out for that long and then to come back and score goals for the team, you know, words can't explain. So, you know, just big pat on the back for mm -hmm. Umar because, you know, you could easily lose your head as a player and just think, forget everything. And mm -hmm. when you get thrown back in, you know, it don't even matter anymore, but, you know, he's, he's kept the focus and, you know, rightly come back in the team and done his thing. It's fantastic, isn't it, to hear the crowd shouting, singing, Umar, Umar. It is, it's great, and I mean, the, the crowd have really taken to him because he scored some really important goals for us through yeah. difficult moments as well as, as a side, so for Umar, as Yannick says, to, to be where he was and come back and show the character yeah. and the desire to, to get out on that pitch and with all his energy score some vital goals for us, uh, speaks volumes for him as a person. just want to ask you about one of our young wide players, Adam mm -hmm. Ola Luckman, who yeah. has only had fleeting appearances in the first team, yeah. but he's looked the part when he's come on. Yeah, obviously Mola, you know, I've seen him play over the years as well, so he's n it's not nothing that I don't expect. You know, 
think with game time he's going to get much better than what we're seeing at the minute. And Is he a player confident. that you were aware of down in London? When he was a child. Yeah, I know a lot of people, mutual friends that know him, you know, really well, and always like, yeah, look after him, kind of thing. So I've been trying to do that, and so far he's going in the right direction. So it's good. You really like to look at him, don't you? I do like him a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, I, naturally, I mean, Yannick will tell you as a, as a wide player mm-hmm. and you know, an attacking player, you want to see these young lads going at fullbacks, and mm-hmm. I think Adam is one of those that you know he gets up, k- picks the ball up, and he wants to be positive, mm-hmm. wants to go past people, wants to get a shot off and a crossing. Yes, he's a young man and he's going to take a little bit of time. He's obviously still got to work on his final ball and final delivery. That's the hardest thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you can have all the talent in the yeah. world. You've got to deliver that final pass. Yeah. You've got to hit the target when you're having a shot, what have you. But that comes with time and a bit of patience from everybody. But yeah. certainly somebody that I really, really enjoy watching. Let's just change track slightly. Your national side just failed to qualify for the World Cup by one point behind Tunisia. Yeah, we, we was unlucky, you know. Um I was obviously it's disappointing because you know we, we should have been there, but five minutes of football turned around the whole fortune and you know took took the group out of our hands. But it's part of football, and we've got a good team there. We just got to concentrate on the next African Nations Cup, which I think we'll probably win. What's the response been by been like back home to the elimination? It, the fans are definitely disappointed, you know, because World Cup's their thing. They want to be there, and you know they're so passionate about football. You know, you can see football like runs through their veins. You know, when the country wins, everyone's happy. Country loses, like everyone's flat. So, <laughs> obviously, they're going to be disappointed. But you know, hopefully, we can bring them some joy in the next cup. But it's going to be tough watching the World Cup. That's for sure. Disappointments as well for James McCarthy and Seamus Coleman, who weren't mm-hmm. involved against Denmark, yeah. but. The Irish were they were outclassed. Yeah. yeah, they were in the end after a positive result out in Denmark to get you know blown away really at, at home yeah. uh, was was a hugely disappointing result for the Irish and obviously as you mentioned for James and Seamus because you know they've had their injury problems but they would have been back for the World Cup yeah. and they'd have strengthened the Ireland yeah. side no doubt about it so hugely disappointed but there's a lot of disappointments look at the Italians as yeah. well so yeah. I mean I don't think. Was it the 50s, I think, the last time? Yeah. Certainly not yeah. in my lifetime yeah. have I ever watched the World Cup without Italy in it. So yeah. that'll be a. Only just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Dad. <laughs> well, from the World Cup to Goodison Park. Now, David Unsworth hasn't just been looking after first team affairs in the last month or so. He's also been helping out with the Home is Where the Heart is charity. And he was part of a 200 strong group that done a sleepover at Goodison Park recently. <laughs> This is something that's really important to me. Um, you know, we, we started a campaign 12, over 12 months ago and to raise £250,000 to get a house to, um, you know, to hopefully uh, have that up and running before Christmas uh, to support this campaign again, it, it goes without saying. Um, you don't even have to ask it. it it's, it's, it's a legacy that the under-23s will always have and, and always keep. The lads done it last year, um, basically sleeping out and it's all really for the community and raising money. It's, it's a really good cause and I think the club, together with the fans, um, you know, really do great things. It's a classic, isn't it, of the Everton family. You know, they've got supporters, fans, staff, all involved tonight uh, to raise some money and have a, hopefully a great experience in a sleep out here. What you've done last night is fantastic, it's incredible um, and we did it all for a great cause and we mustn't forget that for one night that we might have not slept or have been cold, people do this seriously for weeks, for months, for years and you've made a real difference. The, the turnout from last night is incredible. Nobody in this day and age should be homeless, nobody at all. Uh, so you know, we've decided to do something about it 12 months ago and uh, we will continue to do something about it, you know, for years to come. That was a good effort by them, wasn't it, Graham? Another good effort from them. I mean, they did it last year and they've, they've followed up and done it again this year. And, you know, all the credit in the world to them because it's a horrible scenario for anybody to be in, to be homeless, sleeping on the streets, 
you know, no one should have to live like that. So a really good cause and, you know, fair play to everybody who mucked in and, and, and got themselves through that night. And that's just about it for part one of this week's Everton show. Coming up after the break, we'll hear from Franny Jeffers ahead of the under-23s mini derby against Liverpool at the weekend. And, of course, plenty more from Diamond and Yannick. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of this week's programme. Right, let's hear now from Franny Jeffers, who's been in charge of the under-23s recently. He's had two checker trade games against Lincoln and Mansfield, either side of a Premier League two fixture against Swansea City. But this weekend, he takes charge of his first mini derby when Everton under-23s cross the River Mersey to play Liverpool at Prenton Park. We caught up with Franny at USM Finch Farm ahead of the game. Loving it, as I mean, got got thrust in there, didn't I? Things happen quick, like they do in footy, but I'm loving it. The lads have been great, to be fair. Can't, uh, can't thank them enough for the way they've responded. You know, I've done, done loads of coaching, been around Unzi and Ebb for a, for a while, been around the academy for a while, but actually when, you, when you're in the position, you have to make the decisions and, and you know you've, you've never had any experience, so it, it can be quite, quite daunting. And you're speaking to young lads and you're throwing young lads out there against seasoned professionals, aren't you? Both those teams that we played in the Checker Trade played good sides, experienced players. Yeah, that's it. And, and they, they play the game a different way to without, without harping on about it. Academies or under-23 football, uh, you know, it's up and at you. It's, it's, it's a lot more direct. Uh, academies are, tend to be a lot more football. You have it, we have it. Uh, whereas them games, they, you, you know, you come up against a real test right from the outset as we found out against Lincoln when we conceded after two minutes. Let's look ahead to this weekend, one game that I'm sure you've been looking forward to immensely. Liverpool at Prenton Park, Saturday night. Yeah, can't wait, as, can't wait. I mean, as a player, playing for Everton to play against Liverpool was always the one. You know, yeah, you look forward to the game, you always looked out when the fixtures come out. Uh, been, as I say, a few weeks build up to this, not knowing whether I'd be in charge or whether Someone else would be in charge, whether Unzi would be back, you know, it's uh, but as I say, we're preparing for Saturday as if as if I'm taking the game and can't wait. Has the gap been a problem, Franny? Because it's been a long time since the last under twenty three fixture. Well no, I don't think it is. Our lads are fit. Unzi Unzi and Eb and myself, you know, they, they train with a good intensity. Uh, they had three games in a week. And basically, you know, we, I almost went with the same team for every game. Uh, so a little break will have done them good, freshened them up a little bit. You know, they've had a few days off here and there. Uh, but we're back into it this week, training hard and, and preparing for Liverpool. And not just a Merseyside derby against Liverpool, a table topping six pointer as well. Yeah, it's early on in the season, isn't it? So, you know, you've got Leicester and, and West Ham as well who are, who, are, who, are, who are not out of it. And, you know, Liverpool, Liverpool sitting top of the league. Uh, we won it last year, so, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a table topper, isn't it? But, it's only early in the season, does it? It's just another game. Don't try and play it down. <laughs> no, I mean, do know, the boys know how big this is? You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? I mean, uh, I said it's just another game. It's not, is it? It's it's a Merseyside derby, uh, biggest games of the season when they're in the Premier League for Everton. You know, for the for the fans, for everyone involved, the clubs. For me, it's the biggest games of the season, and for our lads. Under 23 level, it's it's probably their biggest game of the season because it's a Merseyside derby, and I think most of them most of them will have experienced a few a few Merseyside derbies, whatever whatever the age. But don't worry, I'll be I'll be reminding them what it's about this week, and uh, maybe a few little video clips will be shown, and and uh, we'll see how we go. Will you be stressing to your lads that we don't want anybody getting sent off in a Merseyside derby? Yeah, I will be stressing it to them, but I'm sure they'll be. Throwing it back at me, won't either. <laughs> they remember what happened in '99, so you know I'll have to uh, I'll have to play that one the right way. That feeling of getting one over on Liverpool, though, it never it never subsides, it never leaves you, does it? No, not for me anyway. Everton fan, Evertonian, uh, watch many of Merseyside derbies, been on the wrong end and the, and the right end uh, as a player as well as a fan. Uh, they're just special, special times, aren't they? Special games and. As I say, we're looking forward to it. Strange one Saturday night, isn't it? It's not, the, not your usual kick-off time. For it is, football. yeah. I mean, I, d I don't know the reasons, to be honest, as it was, it was, it was scheduled for Sunday, weren't it? I think one o'clock. Uh, but Saturday under the lights at Prenton Park, you know, be a nice occasion. And then pick a team to go and beat Liverpool. Let's hope so. Good luck. Thanks, Daz. Graham, the mini derby 
this weekend and no fixture against Liverpool is an ordinary fixture, is it? Not for Everton. No, far from it. doesn't matter whether it be a youth team game, an under-23 game or a senior game. You just want to win the game, simple as that. The performance levels, yes, we want to play well, but ultimately you want to make sure you get the three points. And, you know, Franny's going to be in charge again and we've already heard from him and what it means to him and the players, you know, we're representing that, you know, Everton Football Club and you certainly don't want to be getting turned over by them. He speaks well, Franny, doesn't he? He's clearly enjoying the role. I think he is, yeah. I mean, I think Franny loves football, first and foremost. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And I think it's great for him to have had the opportunity to to manage the lads as well and just because that's part of his learning curve as well you know to, to, to stand in front of the lads and give team talks and then try and address things at half time as well so all part of his development and I'm sure he's enjoying it You'd have played in local derby matches at every conceivable level of the game Yannick yeah. and they're, they're always they're always different games aren't they? Yeah you know you can never predict them that's one thing I've realised and you know with the with, it, with the Merseyside derby something else you know and I've had so much rumours like Reds can't marry blues and you know <laughs> things like that. So I can imagine. I can't imagine what the youth team games are like. It'll be interesting to see actually. Right, let's move on to your charity stuff that you've yeah. been doing. I know you've been keeping yourself really busy. Yeah, you haven't been on the football pitch. Let's start <laughs> off with YB3. What's YB3? Well, it's a it's a tournament that you know organise free side. You know um, to be played down the streets and and obviously the Premier League have got involved and bought the Premier League kicks. And I had all my former teams, such as Plymouth and Bristol City, Crystal Palace, obviously Everton, now current team, and also had a Hillingdon Borough team in there. That was important to you, wasn't it, to have Hillingdon Borough involved? Yeah, you know, because it it it, show, it shows you know the what I'm trying to do as well for their kind of club aspect, and you know, overall the day was a great day. You know, YB3 tournament coming off. You know, some, an idea that I thought of in my head and actually coming to life was was incredible. What's the concept? Is it literally just three aside or the two outfield yeah, players it's, and the it's, it's three aside. So if you imagine a night ball and think of um, the octagon and the night ball, you know, the pitch is shaped like that. So the closer you get to the goal, the pitch gets smaller. So there's a lot of awareness, you know, because some people might like running straight. And, you know, if you run straight, you might run off the pitch. You have to realise that the as the goal comes, as you see the goal, the pitch is getting smaller, so it involves a lot of awareness as well. You know, yeah, that's the that was basically the idea for them to play free and enjoy as well, but also know that like, they have to be disciplined. Mm. You know, when you know the other your team couldn't score the goal unless everyone was over the halfway line. Right. You know, so the it was teaching a lot of things at the same time and trying to cover a lot of bases. So it's not just about attacking; there's a defensive element to it. And you want to take it over to the Congo, do you as well? Yeah, I want to take over to Congo. I also want to do one up Merseyside because I think that would be good, you know, to get like the real community involved. And you know, hope you never know, you might get a good player in there. Mm. Who knows? You know, so it'd be interesting. And we know how popular this guy is in Africa from when we went to just Tanzania a little bit. Yeah, he had <laughs> I mean, his own cavalcade alongside <laughs> the team. He did. Bus. I was going to say, oh, no, no, popularity yeah. is, is is phenomenal out there. I mean, Wayne was with us as well, mm. and. You know, Yannick outdid Wayne, I think, out in Tanzania <laughs> wow. as well. When, when we, certainly when we got, yeah. certainly when we got off the plane, yeah. and you know, I'd never forget the motorbikes and the oh, cars yeah, yeah. And coming alongside yeah. the coach, the coach there. It, it must, great, uh, that, must have been, it must uh, be a great boost for you as well. No, that was a great boost. Obviously, I was still kind of far, you know, but you know, I didn't, I hadn't played for ages, but for them to still be supporting like that is incredible, and makes me want to come back and do well for myself, the team, and mm. obviously them. And you've also been involved up here as well, Yannick, with the yeah. Everton School Supporters Club, visiting yeah. local children and, and, and keeping them involved as well. Yeah, you know, um, PL writing stars competitions. So, you know, obviously people know I do a little bit of rapping, like bantering, so I can do rhyming competitions. And yeah, that was a, that's was that been a great cause as well, you know, interacting with kids in a totally different way, you know, outside of football. You thought of interacting with the supporters by rapping, Graham? I spent my <laughs> life interacting with the supporters, guys, <laughs> trust me. Um, but no, I mean, it's all good. I mean, we've got, as Everton the community, yeah. you know, all, all sorts of things across Merseyside. You know, we all try and do our little bit to, mm. to help anybody in and around yeah. Merseyside and improve their lives in any way, shape or form. And yeah. you know, again, always good to do and always good for the soul that you're getting involved doing mm. it. I'm very much involved down here at USM Finch Farm these days. The Everton ladies, they're, they're full-time, they're down here training every day. And they got their Premier League season up and running with a, a victory at Yeovil recently. And it was a it was a win they needed. 
Yeah, they did. Um, I actually spoke to a couple of the girls, Megan and Gabby, uh, at the Northwest Football Awards on Monday night that me and Snods attended. And, you know, they were both up for awards. Megan was up for Rising Star and Gabby was up for Women's Player of the Year. Mm. Unfortunately, mm. neither of them, you know, actually got got the, the major award. But to just, just to be nominated was great. And, mm. you know, they said that they they got themselves on track and it was a good win down there at the Oval. And, they, they seemed in good nick, the pair yeah. of them, and they were excited about you know pushing on and getting higher up that league. Let's look ahead then to the, the Premier League game this weekend, Everton against Crystal Palace yeah. at Selhurst Park, one that you'll be absolutely gutted to be missing, but yeah. it's a big, big game, Yannick, isn't it? Yeah, big, very big game, obviously. You know, our, our league position, yep, um, we're not too far from them in points, so the, the win against Watford was crucial for us. Um, probably can go into the game not as tense but aim to win in the game. It was so important to win that game against Watford on so many levels not least yeah. of which was the fact that Crystal Palace were coming up first after the international break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as Yannick says I mean it just eased the pressure a little bit winning that game because you go into Sellers Park which is never an easy place to yeah. go by the way and with the intense pressure that we would have been under if we hadn't got got over the line against Watford would have been would have been a horrible experience to be totally honest with you for supporters and players yeah. but that just eases a little bit of tension all around mm -hmm. and you go into that game with that little bit of momentum mm -hmm. positive thoughts from the Watford game yeah. and if we can pick up three points we could find ourselves in the middle of the table so the turnaround in winning back to back Premier League games can be quite frightening Yeah, Wilfred Zaha looks as if he's up to speed again yeah yeah, I take inspiration from that. Um, obviously, he's one of my good mates. Uh, it's made a massive difference. You know, him coming back from injury and scoring a goal straight away, that's helped his confidence as well. But not only that, he's taken that into the other two games which I've been watching. And, you know, he'll be a problem and we have to watch out for him. That's difficult for sure. place to go to, Selhurst Park, isn't it? When the fans get behind the home yeah. side. You know, obviously, my experience knowing your Sellers Plus is a, always a tricky, tricky place. You know, people think you know you're gonna go there and you know win. Uh, it's, it's it's not straightforward, and you know they'll be prepared for this game for sure. It's important to score the first goal, isn't it, Graham? We're, we're constantly appear to be chasing yeah. games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's been a major problem for us. I mean, the Premier League's no no place to be chasing games of football. Yeah. You know, if you can get your noses in front, invariably, you know, it makes the other side come at you a little bit more, mm -hmm. and then you pick them off on the counter attack. Yeah. You know, and we've been, we, we've had the opposite effect where we're trying to chase games, and and sides have picked us off, and it's it's no place to be catching up in the league mm -hmm. or catching up in games of football. So again, defensively, we've got to be nice and strong, well organised, stop yeah. the likes as a half a certain mm -hmm. because he's a top player. If we just get that early goal, that just breeds confidence, yeah. you know, and, and, and we and we push on from there. It is one we're looking forward to, and we'll have all the reaction from Crystal Palace against Everton in next week's programme. My thanks to Graeme Stewart and to Yannick Balassi. Can't wait to see Yannick back on the football field Thank for you. joining us this week. Do join us again in seven days' time for another Everton show. You've been watching The Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.